We are back with yet another tier list video. Hello and welcome to the Super Chunk Show. Today we have another tier list video and we will talk about IEMs in the price range of 100 to 500 American dollars. So this is a video for folks who want to level up from their cheapies and want to start getting serious. These are the types of earphones that will benefit more from a serious dongle that will allow you to extract more resolution and soundstage from them. Let's go! Okay, so the first IM that we're going to talk about will be the Dita Audio Project M. So for the Project M, I'm just putting here because Reverend Dr. Thomas will ask in the comments, how do I rate it? So yes, I'm part of the design team of the Project M and we wanted to do something different with a hybrid design. At Dita Audio, we prefer using dynamic drivers for a myriad of reasons and have always done so until now. We thought it would be interesting to design a hybrid IEM that instead of relegating the dynamic driver to only deliver bass frequencies like how other hybrids do, we use a full range dynamic driver that is mated to a balance armature for additional treble balance. Anyways, I won't rate it so it's here, it has its own spot. I designed this earphone so it's not ranked. Anyways, the first real IEM that I will rank would be the 7Hz5. Now, the 7Hz5 is the latest offering from 7Hz and the coolest thing about this is that it uses 5 dynamic drivers. Initially, I thought that it was going to be a little tricky to tune, but I was pleasantly surprised by the 5s. It sports a warm signature that has excellent mid-bass that lends for a great amount of dynamics. Mid-bass leans thick, which is a rarity in 2024 where it is just trendy to feature scoop mid-bass to emphasize mid-range clarity. I like how 7Hz just gives the middle finger to that and just do its own thing and create a breath of fresh air in 2024. This is also balanced with slightly elevated upper mids which help lift the thicker signature making it more balanced sounding. So. Where do they go? I think that they are excellent. It is a breath of fresh air in 2024 where everything is kind of V-shaped and in the boring way. Next up, we have the Campfire Honeydew. So if 7Hz 5 was a positive example on how to make a warm sounding IEM, the Campfire Honeydew is an example on how not to make a warm IEM. The Honeydew is a temple of bloat featuring elevated mid bass that lacks self-control and easily bloats affecting the mid-range. I do like its chassis though, plastic fantastic with a nice metal nozzle. It does look pretty but it isn't enough to save it from the bloaty signature. Resolution here is also quite poor as well. Rating on these would be a strong no no no. Um, yeah, it's just not one that is very nice to listen to. There is just too much bloat although the chassis does look rather nice. Next up! we have the Zigat Arite. So this is probably my favorite offering from Zigat. The Arite features a one dynamic driver plus four balance armatures that is neutral, leaning, warm. Faceplate on the Arite is a, really a thing of beauty. I like how it sparkles and catches light. Base on the Arite is rendered by the dynamic driver. What I can say about the base on the Arite is that it is very resonant and punchy. I like how it renders mid-range. It is really clean sounding and distinct despite having more excitable bass levels. There is no bass bleed here and this is a big plus for the mid-range as it maintains a rather pristine character. So rating these are just simply excellent, great. I, I do like them. I think they sit behind the fives because the fives are just a bit more interesting to listen to. Next up we have the... Let's see... SimGot EM10. Now, so SimGot is playing the squeeze a ton of drivers into a chassis game with the EM10. Featuring one dynamic driver, eight balanced armatures, and one piezoelectric tweeter per side. And simply, that is a lot. Sonically, the EM10 takes a different direction to what they released back in the EA500 LM and EA1000, where those feature more of a V shape with elevated mids. These are straight up warmer sounding. Warmer sounding IEMs are a little bit more difficult to make them technically competent, but SimGod managed to do just that. These are the white elephant, the rare ones that are technically very competent despite them being warm and as such are very refreshing to listen to. Again, you know, these, these pair, are they behind the fives? Definitely not. I actually like them more than the fives. Okay, next up we have one that is the white, white IEM, the Meze Elba. Now the Elba is Meze's cheapest offering and they share a similar shape to their previous model, the Adver. Featuring one dynamic driver and has a V-shaped signature that is easy and fun to like, it is a great option if you're looking for a Meze earphone on the cheap. 
I found them to have decent levels of resolution to match as well. They are, well, they are kind of decent. I wouldn't put them into good because resolution here, it's, it's, it's possible, but it's not that amazing. It, it's okay. Next up, let's talk about the, let's see, what should I talk about? Hmm. Let's talk about the NF Audio NA2 Plus. Now, NF Audio has a history of making reference sounding IEMs and the NA2 Plus is no different, featuring one dynamic driver. The NA2 Plus is a very highly resolving IEM that has a brighter signature. This is one for listeners who are a bit more experienced and can appreciate the class leading levels of resolution. However, for folks who are not used to such a reference signature, it can come across as a little bit too bright. But nonetheless, these are excellent because really the resolution on offer here, it's really good for its $100-ish US price range. It's performing beyond that. It's just that it might be a little bit bright, but despite that, excellent levels of resolution, so it goes behind the fives. Next up would be the 7Hz Aurora. The Aurora is the flagship from 7Hz. At the moment, they opt to make an IEM with an interesting set of driver combination, featuring one dynamic driver, two balanced armature, and one planar tweeter. The Aurora offers a unique tone like no other. Featuring a more U-shaped signature, resolution here is excellent. For me, I feel that there is just a tad bit of sizzle in the upper mid. Apart from that, I really like the Titanium Damascus faceplate that features layers upon layers of colour. These are quite different from the fives and I found them and I found that they actually complement each other pretty well because these are a bit more traditional referency sounding rather than the fives being a bit more fun. These are certainly good. Let's talk about the Binary Acoustics Dyna Quattro. Everybody wants to know which is better, the Dyna Quattros or the fives. Truth is, it really depends. The Dyna Quattro shines when you give it enough power. So when I did my review on these, I was mainly using the Lotto Pogo Touch and that DAP drove these simply beautifully. However, I realized when I swapped to other dongles, then it kind of starts to struggle. What I like about the Dyna Quattro is that it is tonally coherent with the use of three dynamic drivers plus one passive radiator. You get a full body base that is coupled by resonances from the passive radiator. Mids is also forward with lively detail. However, using a lesser dongle, the dynamics drop is quite significant. The Dyna Quattro would have ranked higher if it was a little bit more efficient. So yeah, they just go behind the Aurora. It's good. If it's easier to drive, it would simply be excellent. So next up, we have the Truth Years Nova. So the Nova was the highlight from Truth Years in 2023, featuring one dynamic driver plus four balance armatures. It utilizes the Harman curve to AAT. It is quite a pretty looking IEM and technically above average, but as it follows what Harman sets it out to be, it does get lost in the mix a little as it is a wee bit boring. But alas, it is a decent offering. Tanj Jim Origin. Origin is a single dynamic driver that is semi-open from Tanj Jim. When I was listening to these, they remind me of the SimGod EA1000 with the exception that the Origin is just slightly not as good. Bass is deep but does not reach the lows of the EA1000 while resolution is above average as well. So all in all, where do I place them? I, I think that they are good. They are an enjoyable listen. It has good resolution. It's quite nice with that halo glowy sound that is made available through its semi-open design. It's, it's good. And of course, talking about the origin, now I cannot ignore the EA1000 from SimGod, which shares a really rather similar tone to the origin, but have better resolution and bass that is just punchier as well. There is this glow halation to the tone that makes the EA1000 so beautiful to listen to. It has a V-shaped signature with an elevated upper mids, perfect for female vocals. So where would I rate them? They are better than the origin, and I think that SimGod does resolution very well. I think they will go in front of the retail. They are excellent. Next up, this is an interesting one. These are the Elysian Pilgrim. So when the Pilgrim first dropped, I was pretty eager to hear them. So I went down to my local audio store just to try them out. I wasn't blown away by them, however. The Pilgrim plays it very safe with a V-shaped tuning with enough resolution. Inside it is a one dynamic driver that is paired with three balanced armatures. It is a little bit more sub-bass focused compared to mid-bass and this helps to create a signature with really clear mid-range. I however found dynamics here to be decent enough. All in all, a very decent performance but nothing really outstanding. I think that they are better than the Elbas but um, 
Yeah, they, they, they are decent. Moving on, let's talk about the BQEYZ Cloud. Now, the BQEYZ Cloud did surprise me, unlike the Pilgrim. I had no expectations for the Cloud as it really wasn't talked about all that much. All I knew was that it had one dynamic driver and one passive radiator. What surprised me was the levels of resolution this IEM churns out. It is highly resolving that it's coupled with the largeness of tone afforded by the passive radiator. In a way, it actually also reminds me of the SimGod EA1000, especially when it comes to tonal colour. Also, the teal colour on the IEM is pretty interesting as well. I, I would say that these are excellent. They are not as good as SimGod, but it does quite a good job and I enjoyed them while I was listening to them. The next one are a bit interesting. I don't think many people know them, but they are kind of in the price class anyway, so I'll just talk about them. These are the Campfire Audio Comets. Okay, fine. These are a bit dated by now, but Campfire Comet is one beautiful IEM. I really love the fit and finish of the chassis. It feels super solid, but it's not the same when it comes to Sonics. Featuring one balance armature, which is a tall order to ask of those balance armatures to render a full spectrum of sound. The Comet delivers a whole hum experience with bass that lacks dynamics and resolution, with mids that is rather flat sounding as well. These are also a no no no. It's one of those things, they, they, they look nice, they feel nice, but they don't really sound nice. So next, let's talk about the Moondrop Dust. Now the Moondrop Dust is Critical's latest collaboration with Moondrop. It does come with a DSP cable that worked terribly on my iPhone where the app just refused to work. Fortunately, it fared better using an analog cable. Internally, the Dust has two dynamic drivers, two balance armature and two planar. It features a natural warm signature which is largely pleasing and has good technical chops that allows for a high level of clarity and separation. I really enjoyed my time with the Moondrop Dust honestly, so are they better than Dynacrotros? I think that they are actually. They are just a tad bit behind the Aurora. I think the Aurora has better resolution but the Dust is no slouch either. It goes there. From Japan, we have Final Audio with their A5000. This is a level up from the A4000. The A5000 is the most balanced sounding in the A series and delivers an engaging listening experience with very well balanced sonics. Internally, they have their dynamic driver, what they call the F-Core driver unit powering it. The A5000 is largely comfortable as well as the chassis is so light and has a nice shibo finish that is the finish that you get on cameras, DSLRs and is paired with a beautiful box braid cable. Sonically, these are a very well balanced earphone with a natural tonal weight as well. These are certainly good. I still prefer the Aura, so they are... Will they be in front of the dusk? Uh, well, I think just maybe slightly behind, but still good nonetheless. And next, let's talk about the Heidi's MP145. Now, the Heidi's MP145 changes things up for IEMs that uses a planar driver. Planers usually exhibit a tad bit of metallic upper mids, but Heidi's managed to minimize that by creating a very endearing listen on the MP145. I like how it renders soundstage as well as it just simply sounds really large. But these are certainly excellent sounding. These are ones that I was... That, that I really rather like but the shell is a bit big so I can't really score it a bit higher but hey for those of you that can fit this these are pretty excellent next up let's talk about the Tanj Jim Kara so I'm not where to sh so I'm not sure where to start with the Tanj Jim Kara I first heard it back in Chengdu last year and reviewed it some months later these are a very safe and warm sounding IM that has okay resolution and technicalities it is very polite sounding and probably suits people who are really new to hobby but I just don't find it all that exciting to listen to unfortunately it's just warm lumbrous and not very technical so uh, these go to the no no it's still better than campfires though so it gets the top spot of no 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 and next up, let's talk about the Kiwi Ears Quintet. Now, these are my favourites from the Harry Fruit brand. The Quintet is a very well-tuned V-shaped IEM with elevated upper mids that uses five different sorts of drivers inside. One dynamic driver, two balance armature, one planar and one piezoelectric tweeter makes this an eclectic listen. Resolution on the Quintet is very high and delivers them quite cohesively despite all the different types of drivers used. Resolution is simply just top-notch. Racing, these are excellent. These are the best from Kiwi Ears. 
And for the last IM, we have the SimGod Super Mix 4. Now, the SimGod Super Mix 4 is like the Quintet and it uses a ton of different driver types. One dynamic driver, one balance armature, one planar and one piezo electric tweeter form the heart of the Super Mix 4. Tuning-wise, the Super Mix 4 is a warm listen and in 2024, SimGod has tuned their IEMs to be warm and, and the cool thing is that they have the versatility to make it happen. I just wish for them to have a tad bit more bite and that would make me very happy. So are these good or are these excellent? So it's a bit hard to say. I think for what it is and for the price, it offers a very compelling listen. But I don't think that they are excellent. They are, they are good. So all in all, this is my tier list for the price range of $100 to $500. Let me know what are some of your favourite earphones in this price range. And yeah, if you want me to put them somewhere on the list, ask in the comments below. I'll try my best to slot them in somewhere. Also, just one thing to note, I've updated my earphone tier list ranking thingamajig right here in the description down below. You can click to see what I think about all the IEMs out there. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of the Super Chong Super Audio Show. If you guys like more tier lists, let me know what sort of tier lists you guys like. So maybe I'll create them if I have the time. Also, by the time you're watching this, I am preparing for my Hong Kong trip. I will be going to Hong Kong this year. And maybe share some really cool items that is being unveiled there. With that said, I hope to see you guys soon.